Hello friends, in this video we are going to see how to integrate the Tomcat server and the Nginx server. So in Tomcat server, we deploy our applications, those may be web services or web applications. Here our main goal is to allow access to these web applications or web services via a reverse proxy. In this case, it is Nginx server. The clients will access the web applications which are deployed in Tomcat through Nginx server. So we will not allow direct access from clients to the web applications or web services which are deployed in Tomcat server. So here the Nginx server will act as a reverse proxy. When client sends the request to the applications, the communication from clients to Nginx server will happen via HTTPS. Then Nginx server will proxy those requests to the Tomcat server. And the communication from Nginx server to Tomcat will happen through HTTP. That means we will offload the TLS or SSL at the Nginx server. As part of the demo, we will generate the self-signed TLS certificates and we will configure those TLS certificates at Nginx server. And then we will see how to integrate Tomcat server and Nginx server. And we will perform the TLS offloading at Nginx server. And we will make sure the clients will access the applications via HTTPS. We will also make sure we will not allow the direct access from clients to the applications which are deployed in Tomcat. So let us see how to configure all these things. Let us start. For this demo, I am using three machines. For Tomcat, I am using 10.0.0.91. For Nginx server, 10.0.0.90. And for client machine, I will use another IP other than Tomcat server or Nginx. Let us start with generating the self-signed TLS certificate and then we will configure them in Nginx server. So this is a Linux host. Here I have already installed Nginx server. If you want to know how to install and configure Nginx server in Ubuntu operating system, please go through the video in the description section. So here let us get the status of Nginx server. The Nginx server is up and running. Now let us generate self-signed TLS certificates in this server. We have already seen what is TLS and how it works. Please go through the video in the description section if you want to know how TLS works. For generating TLS certificates, I will be using OpenSSL command. So let us type OpenSSL help here. This will provide all the subcommands of this OpenSSL. So for generating self-signed certificate, we will use this request subcommand. When we type help, we can see all the required options for this command. So we will generate the certificate which follows x509 standard. So we need to take this option. So here in addition to the certificate, we will also generate the key and we will not encrypt the key we generate. For that we need to provide the no DES option. So let us provide the new key option for generating the key. So here we need to provide the type of the key. Here the key is of RSA type and here we can use the number of bits. For this example, I am using 2048. Now we need to store this generated key in some location. So for that I am giving key out option. And here we need to mention the path of the key. Here we need to provide the name of the key. And also we need to specify the path for the certificate which is going to be generated. For that we need to provide out option. Here also we need to mention the path of the certificate. Let us also mention for how many days this certificate will be valid. Here I am mentioning 365. That means this certificate will be valid for one year. So let us execute this command. Now it is asking for some options. We need to provide corresponding values here. So for country name, I am providing IN. For state, I am providing TN. For city, we can specify the corresponding city. Here I am providing Chennai. So here we need to provide the organization name. For organization unit also, I am mentioning the same thing. So for common name, we need to provide the domain name of the server. So the domain name can be the name of the domain or fully qualified domain name. So here I don't have any domain name for this server. So I will mention the IP address of the server. So this is the IP address of the Nginx server. So let me copy this IP address. So generally in the organizations when we set up, so we need to provide corresponding organization name, the organization unit name and the correct common name like the fully qualified domain name of the server. So now we need to provide the email address. So I have provided all the details. It has generated the private key and the certificates. Here we can see the private key and the corresponding certificate which we have generated. So this private key and the certificate are self-signed. That means these are not signed by some external certification authority. For example, DigiCert or VeriSign and so on. So generally in the organization, when we configure these for production environments, we will make sure the certificates are verified by some external certification authority. But in our demo, we are using self-signed certificates. We can also get the information about the certificate using OpenSSL command. So let us get the information about this certificate. For that we need to provide X509. 
and we need to provide an option no out. So let us get in the text format and we need to provide input option and the certificate name. So here we can see the information about the certificate. Here we can see the issuer of the certificate, the validity of the certificate, the details about the certificate like common name, the organization, organization unit and so on. The information about the public key which is present in the certificate. So this is the RSA public key with bit size 2048. So this certificate can be shared with the clients but we should not share the private key to the clients. This is private to the server itself. Now let us configure this certificate and private key within the Nginx server. For configuring the TLS or SSL in Nginx server, we need to have corresponding server configuration with respect to the SSL port. So this is the basic template we can use for mentioning the server configuration for port 443. So let us fill these details here. Here the port is 443 and type is SSL. That means this server will listen on port 443. For server name, we need to specify the domain name of Nginx server. Since we do not have any domain here, I am mentioning the IP address of the Nginx server. Then we need to provide the path of SSL certificate which we have generated. This is the path and we need to mention the certificate name. So this is the path of the SSL certificate. Similarly, we need to have the path of private key here. So we have provided the details of the TLS certificate and corresponding private key. Now we need to mention the root here. This means the directory from which the website files will be loaded. So for this, let us create a new directory. Let us go to our www directory. So for this website, let us create a new directory here. Generally, we create the directory with website name here. But since we do not have any domain, let me create a directory with IP address. Let us go inside this directory. So in this we will have the website files which includes the index file as well as other files. So let us copy an example index file in this directory. So this is an example index file. Let us open this file. So when we access the web server, so this index file will be loaded. So let us provide this directory for the root option. And this is the name of the index file, so which is already filled. So this is the basic information about SSL configuration. In addition to the port 443, we also need to fill the details for port 80. Because we should not allow direct requests on port 80. Whenever the requests come on port 80, they should be redirected to this port. For this we will return a code 301, which means HTTP redirect. And that request will be redirected to this HTTPS URL with corresponding request URI. So let us fill the details here. Here the port is 80. And this is for IPv6. Here also we will mention the IP address for the server name. So let us create a new configuration file with these details for our custom website. For that let us go to etc nginx directory and sites enabled. Here let us create a new configuration file. And let us paste the content there. So let us save this configuration. The configuration is saved. Now let us restart Nginx server. The server is restarted. Now let us try to access the website on ports 443 and 80 in the web browser. So let us try to access with HTTPS. So when we access this, since it is a self-signed certificate, it is providing this warning. So let us click on advanced. Here we can see the certificate which we have generated. And these are the details we have provided while creating that certificate. And this is the public information and so on. After verifying this self-signed certificate, let us click on accept the risk and continue. For CA signed certificates, we will not get this warning. So now we can see the message as part of the index space. So that means our HTTPS request is successful. Now let us try to access with HTTP on port 80. When we access with HTTP, the request should be redirected to HTTPS. Let us check that. Here we can see the request was redirected to HTTPS. So now we have successfully configured the TLS in Nginx server. Let us start with configuring Tomcat to integrate with Nginx server. Before that we need to install Tomcat. I have already installed Tomcat server. Please go through the video in the description section to set up Tomcat server. Let us go to the web apps directory in Tomcat server. 
Here we have already deployed a sample application under web apps directory. By copying this sample.war file, let us try to access this application from web browser. Here we need to provide the IP address of the Tomcat server. The port number is 8080 and the context root for the sample application is sample. Now we can see the sample application from the browser. Our goal is to access this application through reverse proxy which is nginx. So we have configured the TLS in nginx server and also we have deployed an example sample application in Tomcat server and we have verified the web application access in Tomcat from client using HTTP. So now we need to integrate the nginx server and Tomcat server so that the direct communication from client to Tomcat should not be allowed and also the client should access the application through nginx server. So let us set up this integration. So let us configure it nginx first. For this we need to open the configuration file again. Here we need to declare the upstreams for this nginx server. So let us define a block for tomcat server. So here we need to mention the server. Here we need to mention the domain name or IP address of the tomcat server and corresponding port number. We can also mention other parameters here like timeouts and all. For this demo, this is sufficient. Now we need to include this upstream block in the server configuration. So for that we need to change here. So here we need to mention proxy pass. The communication from nginx to Tomcat server is via HTTP protocol. So let us mention HTTP here. And then we need to mention this Tomcat server block. So whenever we get requests on 443, Corresponding request will be proxied to the Tomcat server with these details. So let us save this configuration. Here I forgot the semicolon. I added the semicolon and saving the changes. The configuration is saved. Now let us restart nginx server. The server is restarted. Now we can verify whether the requests are getting proxied to the Tomcat server. For that let us open web browser. So here let us try to access the sample application through nginx server. So to access that, we need to provide HTTPS protocol, the IP address of the nginx server and then the sample application which is deployed in Tomcat server. So here the request should pass through nginx to Tomcat. So let us see this. Here we can verify that the sample application is displayed successfully. That means the proxying from nginx server to Tomcat is happening successfully. But we should not access the Tomcat server directly now. Let us see whether we can access it or not. Here we are able to access the application from client machine directly. So we should not allow this. For this let us change the Tomcat configuration to allow only via nginx server. So in the Tomcat server to disable the connections from the servers other than nginx server we can do that in two ways. In the first method if nginx server and Tomcat server run in the same machine then we can update the server.xml in the Tomcat server to allow connections only from same machine. If nginx server and Tomcat server run in different machines, then we need to update the firewall configuration in the Tomcat server to allow connections only from nginx server. So if both run in the same machine, then we need to update the server.xml. So for that, let us go to the directory. So under this, let us open the server.xml. In this we might have different connectors. So we need to go to the connector having port number 8080. Here we need to add a parameter called address. For this address we need to provide the loopback address. So if we provide this loopback address, that means this Tomcat server on this port allows connections only from this address, that means the local host. So if nginx runs on the same machine, this Tomcat server can accept connection from nginx. But in our demo, since nginx server and Tomcat server are running in different machines, so this parameter is not applicable for us. So let me clear this. So I am closing the server.xml without saving. So since nginx and tomcat are running in different machines, let us update the firewall rules. So we need to allow the connections from nginx server IP to the port 8080. So here we are allowing the connection only from the nginx server IP address. Now we need to disable all other connections on port 8080. Now it won't allow connection on port 8080 from other IP addresses. If we run the similar configurations in cloud, for example in AWS, we can perform the same using security groups. Now let us check the connections again using browser. So let us try to access the Tomcat application directly from the client. Here we can see that 
the connection is not working and after some time it will be timed out now let us try to access the same application through nginx server so now we can access the application through nginx server but we are not able to access the application directly from the client machine so we have completed the integration of nginx server with tomcat server we also have configured the tls offloading at nginx server and we have made the clients access the tomcat web applications only through nginx server and we have disabled the direct connections so for disabling direct connections since nginx server and tomcat server are running in different machines we have used firewalls to disable this connection we need to be careful while configuring firewall rules because it should not affect the existing rules for the demo i have used ufw we can also configure the firewall rules by using ip tables before closing this video let us discuss one important thing when the clients access the applications in tomcat via nginx the responses from tomcat and nginx should have proper redirection urls which will be used by clients for example the client should not receive incorrect urls which contains the tomcat server address instead of the urls containing the reverse proxy address for that we need to use proper url redirections these can be enabled by different directives in nginx and also in tomcat so in tomcat we will set the proxy host and proxy port to identify on which host and port the nginx server or reverse proxy is running so that when it forms the urls it will use the proxy host and proxy port instead of the tomcat server address in nginx we have already seen proxy pass to proxy the request from clients to the tomcat server similarly another directive we can use the proxy redirect this will make sure the clients will receive the correct urls when the response is coming from web application like tomcat it will reconfigure the urls with correct values we'll discuss in detail about these directives in another video i hope this video helps thanks a lot for watching